Hello everyone, it is Detrina from the Alluring Bee Boutique and today I'm going to show you guys how to make um, these simple wire wrapped drop beads. I have some upcoming videos to show you how to make the, paddle, uh, the paddled ear wire. I also have a one coming up to show you guys how to do a wire wrapped briolette bead with this cute little wire spiral, which we've already done a video on creating these closed spirals. And also, I do have a redo coming up for the oval ear wires, which you see here on these earrings. Today I'm going to focus on these oval type of drops, but you can use this technique pretty much for any drop bead that is drilled across the top like this. So this particular oval, these are some um, turquoise ovals. This one is eight millimeters by 22 millimeters in length. And I have two of those because I'm going to be making two for a set of earrings. Um, you're going to need some 20 gauge, 22 or 20 gauge wire. I only have 20 gauge in the bronze right now and I want to use bronze to match the beautiful marbling on these stones. On this ones, I actually used copper. Uh, you are going to need flush cutters, some nylon jaw pliers to straighten the wire a little bit. You do not have to use these. You can use your fingers. I have some files or a wire rounder. Um, you're going to need a couple of pairs of chain nose pliers or a, a pair of chain nose and flat nose to do the wraps. And then we will need either some multi-step looping pliers or your round nose pliers uh, marked in the position uh, for the size loop that you want to make. So I've got all of these tools out. Um, I'm just going to clean this up just a little bit and come back and we will get started. So to get started, you're going to want to cut yourself a couple of pieces of wire that is six inches long. You will want to make a flush cut on the end. And then on one end, you uh, for now, basically, you can go ahead and make your ends nice and flush with the um, using your file. Smooth off any rough edges just to keep there from being any sharp points that could potentially snag on clothing or you know, cause a scratch on somebody's skin. So I have went ahead and um, filed up the ends on both of my wires. So I'm going to show you guys how to do uh, the first one. We're just going to take this wire and string our bead on. We're not going to go to the center here because we're going to make, be making the coils here at the top. So we want one end longer than the other. Then what we're going to do is we are going to bend these wires up and over. So we're going to take our thumb and push one wire up, just like this, along the side of the bead. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. And the wires should cross over, like this at the top. Then we're going to bring them down, just, you know, as close to the bead as we can get, but we're not going to come all the way down to the tip of that bead because we don't want to risk breaking the tip of our bead. So once I get the wires um, in the position where I want them, now I'm going to make a bend. I'm going to bend these wires straight up. So I'm going to grab right here with my chain nose pliers. I'm going to work one side at a time. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bend this uh, shorter side up like this. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. It's a little hard to get your finger in there, but you can, um, you get the point of what I'm trying to do. So now that I have these two wires positioned like this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my flush cutter and I am going to snip off my shorter wire using the flush side of the cutters and I'm going to sh leave a, just a little bit maybe like a eighth of an inch or so right there and I'm going to snip that piece off and lay it to the side. Now I'm going to straighten up my longer wire 
so that the two wires are running parallel to each other as best as I can get them. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my, either my round nose pliers or my multi-step looping plier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the wire right next to where the short wire is sitting. As close to that as I can get it. And then I'm just going to bend my wire over at a 45 degree angle like that. I am going to come back around with the smaller barrel underneath and then I'm going to, or excuse me, I'm going to use the fatter barrel underneath. I want to form my loop on the small barrel. So the smaller barrel is on the top. Then I'm going to go ahead and bring this around and I'm going to form a loop right here. I'm going to come down as far as I can wrap, just like this. I'm going to open my pliers and rotate them. And then I'm going to bring this wire on around. So here is my loop. And my wire is back at the 45 degree angle on the opposite side. Do any straightening that you might have to to flatten things out and get them all on the same plane. And now we're going to wrap. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold our little loop with one set of our chain nose pliers, just like this. Yeah, mine's a little bit tall right here. I probably shouldn't have made it that tall. But I guess I will go for it. What I'm going to do before I start wrapping that one is I'm going to go ahead and make my second earring so I can get these the same size. So we'll go ahead and do this one more time. Let's put our little stone on. Come down about a third of the way in. Bend our wires. We have our little crisscross shape. Bring those down. And I can check this this one against the one I have already that's ready to do the wire wrap loops with. Let's come down just a little more. And now I'm going to straighten my wires up. I think this time I'm going to go ahead and do the long wire first. So I Push this one up straight to the top and do the same thing on this side. And I get my finger in between these two wires. There we go. Something to this effect. You know, I've got a pretty good amount of waste, but don't throw that away because you can make bald head pins out of them. All right, so now I'm ready to snip this off as soon as I bring these up a little straighter. I can go ahead and snip off my shorter one. Try to get them as close to even as you can there. So now that I have those looking pretty as close to identical as I can get them, now I just need to form my loop on this wire. And I'm just going to do the same thing that I did on the first one. I'm going to bring in my handy dandy looping pliers here. And first I'm going to, I'm oh, sorry, first I am going to create my 45 degree angle here. Right there. I might have get a little bit lower. Then I'm putting the small barrel on the top again and I'm going to form my loop just like I did on the other earring. Loosen my grip and rotate and then bring my wire all the way around to 45 degrees on the other side. So all I've done now is I have sit and made sure that the two are as close to as um, identical as I can get them. I've got my loops made and I have my wires ready to wrap. So now I'm going to use these flat nose pliers or you can use a second pair of chain nose pliers to do this. But what you're going to do is you're going to grab the loop that you formed as close to where those two wires cross over as you can get and hold it in your pliers like this. 
and then we're going to take our other pair of pliers and we're going to begin our wraps. We're going to wrap down this neck over across both wires and then down towards the tip of our drop bead. Now as you do your wraps, what you're going to do, um, my wire is crossing over the top of the base. So I'm going to go under, around, we're going to work in half turns. So I'm going to grab this wire. It's a little bit long, but I'm going to go ahead and start. As you do your first wrap, come around the back and up like this. We're going to get that wire as close as we can up to the neck of that um, base wire below. Then we're going to come around the other, t or come around again. I'm, I'm not satisfied with that wrap. Don't wrap again unless you're completely satisfied. Because then you, this is really hard to work with this 20 gauge wire, you guys. I sh really should have 22. So let me see if I can fix this up. Just a little bit. I want to bring that as tight into that base wire as I can get it. Before I come around and go across the side again like that. We're going to get it squished up as close as we can get, but we don't want the wires to overlap. Which my wire is trying to overlap, so I'm going to bring it down a little bit like that. And I'm going to use these pliers here to pinch it in. And then I'm going to scooch it up to the previous wrap. So once I get my first few rounds established, I should be okay. This wire is pretty, um, pretty hardened for some reason. Okay, let's try it again. So now we're at this place and we need to come back around the bottom. And up, over. And I'm going to stop there and pinch in my wrap. Because I'm using this hard wire and it's a pretty heavy gauge for this technique. Squish these two together. Like that. Okay. So I'm going to keep going around, and if you're using 22 gauge, you're probably having a much easier time of it than I am right now at this point. Let me just switch it and turn it over. Come in this direction. So now we're getting close to this little short wire, and then we're going to have to wrap over that one as we come around. So get a good grip, and come over that wire. Like that. Because I've got this thicker wire, I'm going to have to work a little bit by hand. And I'm just going to keep flipping this back and forth because I'm, you know, struggling with this 20 gauge. Alright, so now I could come on around. I'm going to cinch that coil up to the last ones. So it's not that it can't be done with 20 gauge wire, it's just that it takes a little extra work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep working until I've got my coils down over this, um, this portion right here where my fingernail is. And I'll come right back and show you guys. So I've got my wire worked down over and over the place where everything crosses. I've got the little short wire secured really nice, and I'm pretty happy with that, uh, with my um, wrapping job there, my coils. So what you're going to do is you're going to bring this wire in close to the base right here before you cut it. Then you're going to get the tip of your cutters out, and you're going to come in and snip that wire with the flush side of your cutters, which is the back side of these, as close as you can get to your work like that. Then all you got to do is take your chain nose pliers and flatten this wire in 
so that it can't catch on anyone's clothing and cause a snag. So just bring it as flat as you can get to the work like this. Make sure when you rub your finger over you don't feel any sharp edges. And I've got that one pretty good. I can't feel anything. It's kind of tucked into the center there. And I'm going to put that, call that the back side of my drop. So that was a little bit of a struggle using this 20 gauge. But it still came out looking really pretty. So basically I'm pretty happy with it. And these I've did on the in the blog post with 22 gauge wire. So you have I've got the full pictures and written instructions in the post on how to do this step by step. And I do apologize for the little difficulty I encountered using this thicker gauge wire. So I'm just going to go ahead and wrap my other one. Let's see if I can have a little bit easier of a time with this one than I had on the first one. Grab my loop. And try to go ahead and start my wraps. I'm going to try doing it with my hand this time. And before I go any further, I want to snug that first wrap up as close to this loop as I can get it. So I'm going to bring in my pliers and try to scooch that up just a little. That first wrap is the most important one because it's going to determine the position of all your remaining wraps. Let's see how I do here. So I've got this far and I need to tighten my coils. I'm just going to pinch them close together, make them look really pretty. And then I'm going to continue on. And we want to get the, the same amount of coils on the second one as we have on the first one. So just keep coiling. And coming down. Stop and check your coil positions and close them up if you need to. Looks pretty good. I think it's almost easier to do the ramping by hand with this 20 gauge. So I've got a couple more rounds I've got to do here. I'll stop and position my coils again. So I have five coils on. I've got six on this one. I've got to go one more uh, coil all the way around. And I'm going to get my other pliers this time because I'm really starting to struggle with this wire. Try bringing it, flipping it over so I don't accidentally overlap my coils. Okay. So now, this is my crappier looking side. I want to try to get that coil right around to this back. Things look better on this side. So I need to get this last coil around to the back before I cut it off. So now I can go ahead and end this wire on the back just like I did on the other side. And then I'm going to tuck my point. And so once I've tucked my point I can check both of my components side by side and see that they came out fairly even. This one's just a little bit wonky on the loop but because it's a more organic look, it's not really that noticeable. So I'm kind of I'm pretty happy with those. And like I said in another tutorial, I will show you I'll show you guys how to make this paddled uh, head, um, earring wire, and I think they look really elegant with this simple wrapped drop bead. All right, so that is it for this video. In the next video, um, I will show you how to do these wire wrapped briolet beads and add this cute little spiral. Alright guys, so that is it. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching today. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. Head over to the alluringbeeboutique.com and check out the written portion of this, this tutorial. 
plus all the other tutorials that are loaded up over there as well as here on YouTube. Not every um, tutorial has a corresponding video, but I've been trying to warp those up for you guys lately due to the quarantine and shelter-in-place situation we all have going on. I hope you all are doing all right, and I hope your families are all doing okay. In the meantime, this is Dee signing off from the Alluring Bee Boutique.